Hey Anna community! Today we are very excited to share our plans for Season 4 with you, introducing its three exciting DLCs and giving you an overview of some of the free updates coming in 2022. Season 4 kicks off on April 12th with our first DLC, Seeds of Change, which allows you to revolutionize the agriculture sector of the New World. To make this possible, you first have to build the new powerful Hacienda, which will become the agricultural hub of your empire. Fulfill your dream of having your own country estate, embellish it, and take advantage of its various modules. For example, you can now produce input goods in the new world, which helps your population become more independent. Benefit from the adoption of island-wide policies and produce high-quality fertilizer that will boost farms in both the new world and the old world. This summer, our second DLC, Empire of the Skies, will usher in the age of airships. Using the latest construction materials from the New World, you can build a variety of specialized airships. Optimize your logistical network by transferring goods and workers between your islands and keep your people connected with the new mail system. Your tactical planning will also take on a whole new dimension as you and your competitors vie for aerial mastery. Season 4 will come to its grand finale towards the end of the year, with the third DLC, New World Rising. You will not only experience the industrial and economic boom of the New World firsthand, but let your residents embrace their cultural roots and welcome a new population tier. Discover a highly demanded feature introduced with the New World Rising. Newly spotted islands offer a crucial building space to further expand your empire. You get to enjoy the sight of colorful, thriving cities and build an iconic monument as the ultimate landmark for a self-confident identity of your New World residents. As always, each DLC will be accompanied by a free game update. Throughout the year, you will, for example, be able to further beautify your empire with orchard trees getting added to the tree painter, or to improve the organization of your ships by combining groupings. And traders will give you a friendly reminder which items you already own to prevent accidental duplicate purchases. Last year, we introduced a whole new era of challenging gameplay, Scenarios. The Season 4 DLCs will add more scenarios that will present you with new challenges and adventures and let you experience Anno 1800 from a different perspective. Buyers of the Season 4 Pass will also receive three exclusive new thematically fitted ornaments, which will be available with the first DLC on April 12th. This was all just a small preview of the content that awaits you in 2022. Thank you for your constant support and constructive feedback, some of which has directly influenced our plans for Season 4. Stay tuned and keep an eye on the Anno Union and our social media channels to make sure you won't miss anything. Happy city building! Well, this is it. Hello again there, friends and fans. Raptor here, and welcome to our first look at the Anno 1800 Season 4 DLC coming on April 12th. 2022. The live stream will start in a moment or two, but uh, I caught this live a few days ago uh, during a different live stream, and I thought we'd bring it to you all live with some uh, thoughts and opinions and some more reactions on things we may have missed for the upcoming new scenario, airships, the ability to build haciendas, and more stuff in the new world, which eventually kind of felt like it was uh, lacking content with bigger islands and a few other things coming later this year. Now, Anna will be also free from April 9th to April 12th, so if you're watching this, you better check out the Epic Game Store or the Uplay Store to download it for free for a few days for a uh, trial period. And then, of course, after that is over, then you have a chance to uh, buy the game for yourself and any of the DLCs. And uh, someone had asked me today what I thought about Anno in terms of are the DLCs more like a Paradox game where it feels like content removed? And I feel like myself, uh, Anno is an incredibly large game, and so uh, upon playing the brand new, uh, well, the campaign, the original campaign with all the new DLCs, it was really refreshing and adding more challenges as time goes on. So if you're thinking about getting Anno, I would definitely at least say getting the base game and then maybe a DLC 
or two after uh, trying it out for a little while would be a great thing. It actually adds more to the game rather than uh, feels like it adds parts that once were possibly needing to be in there. The great thing about Anno is you can build onto your city at any time and expand, and all the new stuff makes you redesign it. And of course, there's sandbox saves and the ability to have many people in the multiplayer, to which we'll be do doing this weekend. Hey, Here we go. Community, and a very warm welcome for everybody who's joining us for the unveiling of Season 4 today. We are getting a little bit more into detail about what you can expect from the Season 4 DLCs, as well as some events that are happening in the upcoming weeks. Um, if you're wondering who is this person that is talking to us right now, I'm Lisa, I'm the Junior International Product Manager for Anno 1800, and with me today I brought two colleagues of mine. I don't know, guys, do you want to introduce yourselves? Uh, yeah, hello, I'm Dominic, I'm Game Designer for Anno 1800, and in this case, especially for the scenario you guys are going to see later on. Oh yes, yeah, a brand new scenario yeah, for and I'm Oliver, Mining Silver. Yeah, and I'm Oliver, you might have seen me before, I'm the Community Developer for Anno. And I'm the one having the mouse on the keyboard today, so I'll, I'll be the one playing. And these two, you will be the, the clever people uh, commenting on, on what we're doing and giving lots of insights. Yo. Charlie Oliver. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I've done that before. Yeah, that <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Um, so at the beginning of the stream, I will just give you um, a quick overview of all of the things um, that we are covering with this I stream. need those Anno paintings so, on my wall um, from behind. Yeah. I need those. We will um, first of all give you an overview of the season four, and then we will give you um, uh, a small, um, yeah, you know, gameplay preview of the first DLC as well as uh, season as the scenario. And after that, we will cover um, DLC um, 11 and DLC 12. And, um, you know, when the stream is coming to an end, you will also see um, the season four trailer. Yeah, so stick around. Don't don't skip when you're done with the yeah. gameplay, basically. True, yeah. true. Um, stick around. The trailer is quite interesting. Looks good. Mm -hmm. All right. right. So, um, yeah, then let's start with the season four overview. So the season four consists of three DLCs. And uh, also, of course, um, from and also, of course, uh, of um, some game updates that uh, are coming alongside each DLC. Place it down and just connect it with the street and then we can. Yes, of course, there's a newspaper. Watch a new PR. PR. Don't just interrupt me here, please. Thank you. So now we've got a house in Evelyn. I can scroll in a bit. Um, I forgot my glasses, so I. Uh, Excuse me if I miss some buttons yeah. occasionally. I can. This is the Hazia now, you're right. <laughs> right, okay, just to confirm it's yes, yeah, cool. That's the building. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, obviously, it's, it's not just not just the building you place there, there's lots of stuff connected to it. So mm -hmm. let's just click on it. The first thing you see is it basically serves as a warehouse. So you have the full overview of uh, goods and items, and the stuff can uh, be sent yep. there. But like obviously, the most important, the more interesting part is this button, because it yes. opens the modules. So. Yeah, this essentially works like a trade union that. and a palace so first two all at are, once. Uh, just three connections for uh, the hacienda, so we you can uh, make an entire uh, compound out of those uh, ornaments you've seen earlier and these streets. And but the other ones are more uh, more interesting gameplay wise. And this right. saves and so course, much space. Yes, the first one is a new version of the residence, uh, because in the hacienda, which serves as a kind of uh, village center 2.0 basically and you can now build in its radius new residences right so the radius is important right so i can yeah, what, yeah. yeah. Can so more population like what, and more farming doing? space within um, a small area to, very impactful okay, so the thought behind it is basically that, that you're building uh, a big complex with the hacienda so the main building and all the buildings you can see in the in the uh, object menu are supposed to be connected and one big community working for more progress. Um, you have already mentioned that it's a warehouse, so basically all the, also the old uh, productions can also deliver there, but mostly it's made for the new stuff. Um, the radius increases with population on the island, so it is already a bit more advanced radius already. And it can be even bigger, depending on how uh, big your population is there. Yeah, it's a, yeah. It's a, it's a smaller island. Like, look at the city. It's not like it's, yeah. it's, it's OK, but like it, this could be bigger, so the radius would increase. Yeah. And these buildings have to be built in that radius. 
Um, otherwise, they I think they they just they're just not active, right? Uh, the production buildings are not active. If you click on one of the of the hacienda uh, of the residences you build, you can see that there's like a need for being in the radius, basically. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you build it outside, you just yeah. don't get it. That, that it is. So everyone who's like really into, oh my god, what's that, all, all the new stuff happening? So new items on the right side, if you see the last one at the bottom, need. the red bottle. Um, you will see lots of basic needs. And since this is a bigger building, it's four by four mm -hmm. tiles, I think, compared mm -hmm. to the, the normal one. And as you can see, it has, on the other hand, it houses mm -hmm. more people. Per Higher square. density per square yeah. for yeah. South America buildings. But it also brings up new needs. We suddenly need schnapps. What? Schnapps in a new world? Yeah, they, they also like their, their mm. schnapps. And hot oh, sauce. Oh, yeah. You want to have your... So schnapps and hot sauce are the new needs. Hot sauce, I guess. Hot sauce on the side, yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously, this needs to be produced. We'll talk about it in just a second because this is also directly connected to the Asinda. But yeah, so we can also increase your basically your population in a more efficient manner with but the... Yeah. With the efficient um, way, yeah. With the quarters uh, you can build. Okay. So let's take a look at more modules. This is a storeroom. Uh, works as a depot basically on land. So it increases your overall capacity on the island by 50%. So this is an on land depot for this. And I think it's oh. the same size as the, as the like the, it can store, I think that 50 tons is also the same that the yeah. sea depots do, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is more like a space side if you want to do it in the ocean or if you want it in water. And now we get to the really exciting stuff, mm -hmm. which is the farms. Yeah, that's coming coming into the meat of the DLC. Um, yeah. yeah, within the radius, and you can build these new Just buildings. Connected here with the I think one thing that we should mention right away is that um, you have to place the farm itself inside the radius, but not the farm mo modules. No. So um, for every farm that you build in the hacienda, you will only need sixty-four farm modules, which is pretty cool because <laughs> it's super space efficient and yep. you also can place the farm modules outside of the radius and it will work yeah just the building needs to be in the, yeah. in the radius and now you can see i can select which crops i want to grow on that plant uh, on that farm and, and there is like one crop that directly like is super visible to me and it's grain yeah and the potatoes and the also. potatoes yeah Yay. so this answers the question of where do they get that schnapps from yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> Um, and the other thing is like, you can see the spices, I mm -hmm. guess that's the hot sauce. Yeah, that's like introduced to the, old, uh, to the new world is now the spices. And yeah. the other thing that's all also really is interesting is grain because um, y the big thing that you need in new world is beer. Beer. Uh, yeah, you can now do and beer you always need in the to old world it. and yeah. the new world. And basically this now gives you the chance, okay, yeah, you, can, you can actually locally produce it. Both now, uh, I don't even know what you don't need hops for it. Uh, what was the no. second thing? It's like a, a cheaper recipe for beer, uh, you need corn. Corn, okay. Right. So, how convenient that you can both grow these in the, in the Hacienda farm, right? Well, it works out perfectly. Beer. Yeah. Someone really thought about this. <laughs> 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 also, I think worth mentioning is that, uh, correct me, Dominic, but that it doesn't matter whether basically what fertilities on that yeah. island, like all the farmers can basically are really, really special farms. And they yeah, can you can, can actually show them just with yes. coca. coca. Okay. That's really good. No need to worry about fertility so anymore so for your island. So you, if you control it's only one grain, island, you can go straight for yeah. <laughs> oil or <laughs> gold so and the then field size worry are about small, the, so the fertility story behind second. It, these are more advanced uh, and better organized farms than the classic plantations. Uh, yeah, there are so many trees in the way, but I think even the sign changes, right? Yeah. Uh, so you can... Come so on. On, on, the, on each farm, there's then also... A bit of the crop they're place uh, they're growing, and then the farm fields. And you can actually like like switch it now, so we also see that, that it adapts everything with it. Right, we can do that. Let's let's go grain because we yeah, want to make. Uh, Very nice to be able to yeah, organize everything in one place too, so you can monitor output from yeah. one dock and make one primary right. large port. Um, so yeah, and you Good. see that you can you can use the usual tractors from if you have. The and yes, right mm -hmm. so harvest the tractor DLC and tractors are here. Improve that, pr increase the product. Productivity, oh my god. Um, if you use a hacienda this symbol is new, with tractors, but I don't know if you want to talk about it right now. You can do a massive amount of farming in the new world. Mm. We, we can start, I mean, it's also connected to a module, so we can basically go to the to the new stuff True. already. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So what is that, Dominic? What is that? Fertilizer? So yeah, this is a new uh, module for the modules uh, and all yeah. other farms you have in the world. Uh, it can 
yeah, if you unlock it and if you then provide a certain new good, it will also boost all your farms. Well, all your farms is really to onto all farms. But uh, like a new way of industry that is now uh, has been developed by the people living in Hacienda, basically. And now uh, we can benefit from this knowledge they gathered. Yeah, but we, f we first need that fertilizer from yeah, somewhere, we need right? Yeah, you know, it, it will consume fertilizer. And to produce fertilizer, we also need a special module, which would this be... One, the exactly. fertilizer so And you already see a, a radius. This is important because the raw material it uses is passively produced by all animal farms. So in order to produce fertilizer, you need animals to do their thing and somebody then collects it yep and brings it to this new uh, tiny hut a new resource produce, on top of that uh, a highly potent fertilizer from it yeah so yeah, fertilization through manure industrialization through tractors and organization so, and through the hacienda imagine growing farms. all your grain in the new world and saving all that space in the old world for building a massive city without having to worry so much about multiple islands collecting dung and the dung is then uh, showing up in the warehouses, and then the uh, fertilizer producer can fetch it and produce fertilizer, and the produced fertilizer can then end up in the silo modules that will then boost your agriculture output. That's All massive. work has gone into the dung icon. Yeah. Multiple so iterations. Was actually the thing that <laughs> took us the most time for the DLC. Yeah. To be honest, like the discussions were very interesting. Yeah. yeah. So um, so yeah, this is just a big thing. You can boost it basically twice, uh, both with the tractor barn, if you have bright harvest, and now also with the fertilizer. Mm -hmm. And this, as you said, Dominic, it, it works for all the previous farms, so I can also build it here. Just, like, there's also space here. Wow, how convenient. Um, and also, and also um, quite interesting to mention is that um, you can use the dung in the new world and in the old world. So you can boost your, your own farms yeah. in the old world as well. Can you also import it to export to Ibiza, I think? Yep. Mm -hmm. So you can, it's not just the old ones, you can basically ah. make this your dung capital, so to say. So you can export you dung <laughs> to <laughs> the old world and also <laughs> the Africa barren. DLC high as well. Quality, high quality, high quality dung to all over the empire. This is yeah. like to your African colonies uh, as well. This is how you make a name for yourself. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, and th this, this is another boost option. And last thing, I think the last module. Yeah, it's a new the brewery. brewery. Mm -hmm. uh, also a bit smaller than uh, most other drink mm. factories. Yeah, brewery for the new world too. Breweries. Uh, yeah. And it works similar, so we can... She so actually brew the yeah, brew the rum here now too. Because the, as we showed the In this facility. Um, resident tiers. Hot so sauce as well, buildings. schnapps. They have more, more needs. More yeah. needs so they and a tole, which I think is a like corn type uh, chili sauce. Uh, and drink and or old burner of atole. We brought yeah. Something along those lines. Yeah. If you played the, the Eden Burning scenario, you yeah. yeah. might be familiar. Should be should be familiar with that. So yeah, you can pick and now you can be like, okay, let, let's, you know, um, produce this or, you know, I think they need some hot sauce. Um, yeah. For their Multiple breweries can be built too. So you don't just have to pick and choose. Yeah, and you can see it's, it's like a very healthy red color. And I think there are some, some spices hanging there from mm. there. Mm. And there's a new sign, hot sauce. So it is, as you as you <laughs> so used to it, changes. So again, it should be like locally sourced, basically. And it's like this community produces this for themselves. And they are a bit more space efficient and overall improve everything on the ag agricultural sector of your settlement. Yeah, so it's really a, a big of space saver, so to say. Yeah. Like you can really save a lot of space with these highly efficient um, farms. You can, you don't need to necessarily maybe or do less trade routes uh, from the old world for the beer uh, and, exp and replace that. So there's quite a bit of, it's basically the, the, the DLC is all about, um, yeah, saving space, being mm. more efficient at in this case, agriculture. Um, and as we all know that you, the big point for you has always been the, hey, we're lacking a bit of space in a new world. And obviously, mm -hmm. if you do a whole season of the, in a new world, um, giving you ways of uh, making it more space efficient or saving more space is one of the key elements. And this is the, the first step while being the, the first yeah. DLC. By uh, making it look pretty. Like on, <laughs> and on top. making it look pretty on top of that, yeah. 
Um, yeah, let me come show some of the ornaments. Like there is a nice gateway and you can connect uh, walls to it, etc. I'm looking forward to what you guys come up with of all the yeah. little things we gave to this. So yeah, it should be like business in the back with the dung production and <laughs> beauty in very the nice with, uh, parks and that's very nice that you can maximize your farming but yeah. also work. beautification work. anno's been doing a really good job yeah, of not just making it a min maxing excel um, simulator is, um, you know, but also adding detail and stuff and making every and island special i can tell you good. um no worries because you can only build one hacienda per island so you won't be in need of looking that the borders um, cross uh, cross each other but yeah. as many other buildings as you want just the main building is unique and the rest you can as much as you can fit in yeah. so yeah. you can build as many farms as you want you can just yeah. only if you want the second hacienda then you got to go to the next island and do this uh, no, this was i think our island right yep so the only thing we haven't touched yet was that second button here Ooh, which yeah. says po select the policy this sounds familiar if you have the see the power uh, DLC. Um, let's take a look. So we have a few policies to to pick on top of the... And that's the what makes this like a palace the, and the, also the trade union at the same time. The self-organization and a bit of more, more uh, a grip on their destiny. We also give them their own uh, set of policies you can select them. And yeah, reducing needs, all kinds of nifty stuff. Yeah. And more also... Influence. Yeah, sorry. Like the the policies are island wide, so um, if you choose one policy for this island, you can also choose another policy for another island. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you don't need to it. take care of like the the radius or something. Yeah, like similar in contrast to the palace, which was has a, had a radius of like a reach. This is like island wide. So if I do the food consumption, it doesn't matter; they are affected even though they are on the other side of the island, basically, right? Yeah. And also, we if you have a um, closer look on the policies, then we can also see that uh, some of them need um, certain levels of uh, attractiveness um, to get, you know, uh, to for you to be able to enact them. So um, don't yep. forget to beautify your city. Decoration guys. important. They <laughs> give you the ornaments, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. It's all connected. Guys. Yeah, it's all connected. <laughs> Gives you a reason to slow down and decorate. Yeah, so it's let's nice. Let's reduce the food consumption a bit because I, I'm honestly not sure if I'm if I built enough buildings here on that island to even support them so this is, this is only so they're slowly thing. starving throughout the live stream <laughs> yeah that's why we, that's why we didn't have the, the scenario afterwards so you, can, <laughs> you can skip in time to the next next thing before before they before we see them complain or protest so yeah this is your senior building again all about efficiency we have the beautiful dung production thanks to your animal farms mm. which you can then export um, to all areas of the world and to boost your old world farm, your Anbesa farms, um, if you have the Land of Lions DLC. Yeah. Uh, I guess we covered like the. Obviously, there's lots of optimization you can do with that content. Um, adding just the fertilizer modules to all your, to all your existing farms and producing enough of enough dung to, for that. Yeah. Um, but that's roughly what you can yeah expect from the the DLC ten, the Seeds of Change. Uh, are there any like b burning questions where we're like, oh my god, we should answer that? <laughs> Somebody just asked for new ships. Oli, you want to say something? <laughs> oh to yeah, that? new ships. In before, in before, we have the same situation as last year. <laughs> where we start sh start spamming chips and ch oh my god, ships and chat. Uh, we got good news. There are ships, so s please sh and wait, wait for later <laughs> when we talk about the uh, more content for season four. Okay, so don't worry, we got gotcha. you. Well, we'll be seeing airships um, shortly. Okay, then I guess timing-wise, we could also uh, look f an, into the scenario instead. If there are no yeah. like specific questions, I think we cover the basics, and the rest is for you to to figure out what else. All you right, can do. Th this scenario that's coming up sure looks because the phenomenal. Ask, it seems like a there are much more items challenging which survival buildings, simulator. Right? That's true. It's um, like so Frostpunk. It feels like items that you'll see what I mean in a second. Uh, the buildings, like for example, the Dung production. <laughs> yeah, very important. Very important, yeah. Yeah, it needs to be boosted. Um, and yeah. I mean, also somebody asked, um, what effect do the new silos have? We can hover over it and we can show them. Mm. Yep. Ooh, is the feedback unit spawned? Because we have a special feedback unit. Uh, there it is. There it is. 
Yeah, nice. Ah, manure spreaders for the tractors and too. Of course, <laughs> you can drive it yourself if you. If there, if there was a first person. <laughs> if this would, yeah, yeah. If this would exist, it would be awesome to drive it around in the town and have everybody run away from you. Yeah, it, it, uh, I think the boost is that it um, it, it should be shown here anyway, right? Yeah. Gives Stop you a one hundred percent productivity boost and extra goods on top of that. Yeah. So it is powerful, but the dunk protection is a bit uh, tricky to get organized. That's why we made it a bit more powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and no more uh, like the, the tractor needs a bit more uh, space than this one doesn't. So this is purely for yeah. boosting the existing fields you already have. Yeah. Questions to that then is: to Do we have to yeah. deliver yeah. tractors to the new world then for this? Is it automatic? Do we have to transport the them across the uh, the ocean? So provide them yeah. with yeah. fuel? So it's quite powerful. From the then new you can world or old world? The items on top. Yeah. So I have a few questions uh, for this one, and I'm gonna have to look into. when you when you produce enough dung, that's And I don't think they address that. Yeah, and also yes, dung will work for Inversa too, and also for the old world. Look at these nice houses here. Barrows, yeah. right? Mm. So it's like a early mid-game kind of thing. So you don't need to like build like a continue for a long time before you can can make use of the of the powerful hacienda, but can like yeah dive in as soon as you build a bit of the new world. Really cool. So Feels like building a city within a city. For our DLC content. City so within I think a city. One of the earliest unlocks. Yeah. So yeah. All right, then I guess now that we've done that, um, I guess we can switch to the scenario. Um, I'm gonna start a completely new one. I think this makes it a little easier. S skip the intro, and I'm just gonna look at how dead that island is. Dominic, I think this is like your it just, baby. It seems <laughs> like it's <laughs> right? salty and dead. Um, so, can you give us a quick overview of what what are we doing here? Where are we? So, yeah, um, story-wise, so after uh, the events that happened in Sunken Treasure, uh, the character you're now playing, Vasco, has been exiled to this remote corner of La Corona, which is our like competitive uh, empire, which is the, uh, the normally the player is part of. And this is a bit of a unhospitable island in the middle of nowhere, uh, but it has famously a lot of silver mines, or silver deposits basically. Yeah. But it has also been trouble to really exploit. Uh, as you can see here, you will Completely inherit, dead river. Uh, a ruined city. Yeah, it didn't go so well. And last a ruined time, city, yeah. <laughs> and we have three islands this time, unlike the Green Game Jam. Yeah, we basically, from Green Game Jam, we've uh, implemented how we make scenarios, and this is now also a bit more of a tighter um, narrative interwoven into the Anno gameplay. And there's some uh, tiny ones. I just want to find the one because we. Find yeah. The church. yeah, there it is. If you yeah. if you see now our, our teaser, the dear Margaret Hunt on social, this is. The church <laughs> that was on that teaser. You bit on the symbolism for like the yeah. atonement for his failure. Yeah. Now we can confirm it's not the background story for Margaret Hunt. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> background, it's a continuation story of Vasco. Exactly. There is also his ship, uh, which you might have not really fought but com competed against. Uh, yeah, the, the icon will change. <laughs> yeah, the, obviously it's a dummy icon, yeah. etc. So it's hot code. Still Still in progress. Uh, what you can do is like uh, demolish the first uh, remnants of the pl of the previous yeah. colonization attempt and get. So this is like the base it. campaign. Uh, you You're leading a city and trying to build a city on top of a city. More out of it than you have. The, uh, yeah. So yeah. Uh, I think oh, it's oh, right. new we'll over the old. Kn uh, okay. But water is uh, going to be a real challenge here. Then yeah, I mean, we, we can we can also like re rebuild these ones here. Yeah, refurbish them. Yeah. Um, you also see the the hacienda oh ruined. Might need a road. That's true. Because you can use a few of the system of the hacienda. It's not one on one the same hacienda than you get in the main game, but it's definitely part of also this scenario. And yeah, what you have to do is uh, over uh, a period of time, uh, the representative of La Corona will show up and demand silver from you, and you have to fulfill the these uh, demands in order to redeem yourself. And this you do, of course, by building a city and building production and use yeah. production to produce the new silver. Uh, good. Which we have introduced now with this uh, proper complex chain. Uh, 
if I say so myself. Um, <laughs> it, it is. It's quite. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you can't see it yet because we haven't. Uh, we haven't unlocked it. Our, but we, we can. We can. I'm gonna play a bit, and if, if you don't quite get there, then we can just unlock it and see how, how it looks like. Yeah. So silver mines are just the beginning. Basically, you could see coins are at the end of this thing. So it, it'll take you a bit to like get through the whole production process yeah. here. So you can also try to build a farm now and see what happens. Let me just quickly, before they start... And can only build a farm in the oasis area, obviously. Yeah. So limited food, oh, okay. limited water. Also Feels way more like survival than it does like an like economic uh, game. Let me just rebuild that. So it's like Okay, so farms. Well, we don't oh, have good. those yet. <laughs> we need more houses. Come on, guys. Um, also sawmill. Oh, that's, that's true. We should, like, maybe, yeah. yeah it's, it's basically uh, based on the regular New World population, but because they are part of a different empire, they have some different needs, and uh, some things might be switched up a bit. Can I? No, this is too much. I it can't. Also, okay. you know, just to jump in a little bit. So this is the scenario Seasons of Silver. It's not an extra DLC. Mm. Um... It's like scenarios are not connected to the main game. Yeah. So um, you also don't have to complete um, sunken treasures first um, to in order to play the, um, the, DS, uh, the scenario. So don't worry about that. Yeah. We'll ruin the continuity, but it works. Yeah. Yeah. Completely standalone. Completely Very nice. Yeah. So many Thing. Okay. When you get the rewards uh, you can then use in the, in the main game when you finish this. But yeah, so basically, what you what you've mm, yeah. seen last year with Eden Burning, this is works the exact same way. It's a separate thing, separate instance, and like you said, you get rewards which you can then use in the main game. But it's like it's not you can't transfer goods or something. It's like um, yeah, separate. You're not the same person. You're not your usual character. You are a specific character, um, which will also share his inner thoughts with you from <laughs> time to time. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's also fun for our narrative guys to actually yeah. interweave it a bit more than they can in the normal regular gameplay. Yeah, I, could, I, I personally found that when we first like talked about scenarios, I, I thought then we had also internal, obviously, some discussions. Like, hey, what, you, what would you like to see? And I think a lot, quite a few people thought, okay, this is a cool idea to like, yeah, give some background on some some characters. Like if done already with Eden Burning, we were like, okay, we we only we provide background on Isabel. Mm -hmm. And then we even went the whole march at the end. I'm not sure, should, can I spoil that already? I shouldn't, right? No, I no. think the players should experience So there's a twist at the end, yeah. which you, that's why you should definitely finish Eden Burning. Yeah. Um, and yeah, now this time we again used a, a previous character. So farm, as you can see, the tiers are working a bit differently. And Dominic so they're advising that you complete the previous yeah. scenario, Eden Burning, so, uh, which has to do with building a dam, desert, uh, you cannot build farm as well as the sunken treasures DLC to understand right what's going on. But you don't have to. Town. And that's basically it. So if you want to have bigger farms than this plot, which looks big now, but will soon uh, <laughs> appear too small yeah. uh, and even if you want uh, to have your your goats uh, grazing on more fertile soil yeah uh, no. goat, goat burritos everybody yeah yum, yum. no no more beef no more beef burrito yeah. like la corona famous for <laughs> that goat meat well and i guess it's it's easier to have goats on yeah. on this kind of ground uh, they're not quite as demanding as some but if you build one of the modules onto the greener ground, then it's also good. Yeah, they get the same bonus that's happy. done in yep. gotten in, in base up basically. So yeah, you can around. see. There you go, and it gets green. Also, there are a lot of questions if the scenario will be available in multiplayer. Dominic, you want to answer that? But you're one person playing one other person, or playing inside the other person. Single player <laughs> only. No, it's, the, it's just a single player game. Experience. Single player only. Scenario, yeah, right? No code. Well, like, like Eden building. It. At least for this. Uh, let me see how many Tadia megas do I need? These take one. Do I need? Should be enough. One, one, one. Yeah. yeah. So. For now. So they're getting some slowly getting some Tadias now this way. Yeah. Um, so I I guess with the, like the super basics done because they we have wood production we have some they're getting a little bit of food at least. You just mentioned hey we we are having very little space, space yeah. and you see the the river doesn't look very very useful Pumpable, at the moment yes. and completely dead if you, if you remember the other islands they are not really not looking much better they have absolutely nothing 
Um, Except clay and, and silver mines. Yeah, it looks like two but other islands. Really cool at least large islands. Fishes? Is that the right word? Yeah. I guess so, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, so Dominic, how, how do we solve that? Or Lisa, I don't know. Who yeah, wants to tell me how, how, there how to solve that? There is one suspicious problem? rune we haven't uh, talked about yet. This yeah. one? Ooh. This one, yes. I mean, are we using our regular destruction shader? Let's on see. It. Oh, I'm, I'm lacking resources, right. <laughs> Um, well, I think I think we still got wood on the on the <laughs> on the boat. Yes. yes. So lucky you. Problem solved. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me build this. No, oh, yeah, build the street first. Um, it's a basin. Yes, the new Let's building we introduced with this scenario is the basin, and some of you might have already spotted one uh, point that can be connected to. Exactly oh, wait, let me go with the back to the building menu. Uh, here, yeah. here it is. There. I mean, it's also, it's, yeah. it's also like we, we, uh, this is basically the introduction yep, one. Irrigation. Uh, if you want to have more, because of course uh, the water capacity is limited for the basin, uh, you can also build them directly then uh, in this menu. And it has a one phase of construction, basically, like a teeny tiny monument. Oh, wait, another way around, I think. Yeah. Better this way, so. You require no, a few. I, I don't want to transfer goods over here. <laughs> few <laughs> workers. <laughs> and then you have to build it. So, so yeah. see, there's a face. Oops. And. Yeah, well, uh, let's build more. Um, exactly. Okay, so, no, let yeah. me first see this. So, I mean, yeah. right now we are in summer season. Um, and the seasons, can yep. fill up in summer seasons for obvious reasons. Uh, okay, so that's, that's new. But um, that I haven't seen have before. To the top right corner, Behind her camera, you can see this little UI element. That's a new um, thing being added. Which seasons. In which season you are. I think I can't see it because we are, our camera is in front of that. <gasps> oh, okay. So that reminds but me of Frostpunk a bit with storms coming. Right <laughs> Beautiful UI. Blizzards. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Now you can yeah. see it. So now you can see it. Perfect. So it's like so blizzards it's coming in um, Frostpunk where you got to prepare for the winter. Here you got to prepare for summer with droughts. How long the season will last? Farming. Water um, preservation. So right now we are in the summer season, and then um, on like the complete right side of this UI, can you can see also um, buffs and debuffs because um, yeah. every season comes with its own, you know, buffs and debuffs. Buffs <laughs> and debuffs. Yes, because uh, <laughs> thanks to a system we started in uh, the Green Game Jam that can change the environment dynamically, we have now decided to use this to introduce seasons into our world. Uh, in this case, uh, a dry season and a monsoon season. Yeah, so <laughs> really dry or really wet. And during those rainfalls, your basins can fill up. So uh, uh, so the basic value is always 10. Yep. And only build 19 uh, modules to it. And later on, when it starts raining, they will start filling up. And they will also reduce a bit in summer again. So you have to... You can uh, see the red arrow here, indicator. Yes. So we'll never drop below 10. But if you have like gathered enough uh, during the, the rain season, it will yeah. go slowly so down. This will actually and catch the rainwater, as they mentioned, but also seems to these, uh, perhaps take groundwater as well. Uh, the more you can collect and then later on expand faster. So this is the, the offset. That's why we gave it a uh, 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 construction time. So you have to plan to have enough uh, resources and people uh, to work it. And then build as many as you can. And as we have already seen yep. on the Can't build that right away. to get some self sufficient, you will first have to transport goods there and then build the first basin. And once that's running, then it can be self sufficient to a certain Takes time to build. And give you access to Just like a monument. goods you might need in the silver production chain later on. Yep. But yeah. yeah, I think it's really it's really like the seasons there's a lot of like planning for you involved, right? So you need the bas basins ready. Um, to collect that the, the, the rainwater for the for the next season. But on the other hand, like the buffs that Lisa mentioned, like right now these are fairly to harm of like okay, fifteen productivity plus, hey, that's nice. Um, this is give ten ten percent additional productivity, also nice. But, um, but um, I think there are also some debuffs, right? And especially the rain season. I remember during my when I played it, I remember like that my mines got flooded, yep. which is not nice. Yeah. Yeah. So we made like special. Uh, types of, of both summer and rain season and they have a bit of their own set of uh, 
bonuses and flooding in the effects. monsoon season um, in the mines. They, but because it's like one narrative woven into it, they're going to always be the same. So you might be surprised by them in the first time, but the next time you know what's coming and then can plan ahead and beat the circumstances and reclaim your title. Uh, whatever that was from Vasco. I'm not sure well, if he's a, a count. Basically, that, because that, that basically me means the worst case you can you can only use your silver mines in summer, mm -hmm. or at least like they have, they are significantly more less efficient in during monsoon period. During so you need to produce time. the silver in summer. And I like this like, a yeah, lot so more planning. There's a lot of juggling going on with this like update DLC, with which the seasons like bring you basically. Outside the typical um, expand, expand, first expand. Time you really plan ahead uh, in Anno to not run out of certain things in certain time frames. No. There's a new, new challenge introduced. Mm. If we don't get to the monsoon season, season uh, we have a game, uh, safe game prepared so we can show you how that looks and what happens. Um, but um, yeah, you can also see, with, like, like with Eden Burning, there's some changes to how the Honoleos uh, work. So they suddenly want tortillas instead of plantains, for example. Yeah. Um, I think rum is a, is a, is a, is a happiness, a happiness need main, usually, right? It's a, it's um, a proper need and uh, the ponchos are happiness need. And there was some twist I, I noticed when I first was like, oh yeah, ponchos, and I was, wait, I, ca I can't, can't use uh, llamas, <laughs> alpacas for that, I need linseed. And then my second moment was like, wait, I don't have linseed on this island, what the, why? And then, okay, so it's here, and now you see where the, where the next tricky thing is like, I need a new island for my linseed, mm -hmm. and it turns out, well, there's no water on that island. No so more alpacas for ponchos. Need season to fill it up, and then I can start in this, ponchos. In this so scenario. You see, yeah. you see, uh, yeah, there's some... Um, you should have seen Ollie figuring all of this out in the office. I was like, <laughs> Especially after each spelling thing changed. I was like, this worked less differently last time. Yeah. <laughs> I did change a lot. On <laughs> but I also uh, got the most out of those three islands I could get. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, okay. So, I think we got the basics set up, right? Mm -hmm. um, we talked about the needs. We talked about the... Basins and the canals, mm. again, you need this works in, if you play Land of Lions, you know how the canal system works. It's a similar thing, just that you have a limited supply of water, yeah. basically, and, uh, or like more limited, and it's connected to that season. Depends effect, on your basin. planning ahead, and then if you if you start to have enough basins, then you can go uh, a bit more wide Let with your economy. Speed that up. So we can run away the Hacienda, which you know from the, as we just explained, from the, from the seeds of change from the main part of the DLC. Um, we don't have all modules here, nope. um, so the farms are there, brewery, and the, the, the quarters for the Exactly, but because you unlock it basically when you come into, you still have to get yeah. Obrera. If you like this scenario, usual way, and once you unlock you're going to love Land of Lions and vice versa. I enjoyed Land of Lions, so I think I'm going to really like this module. a lot. Yeah. And to see yeah, more so survival make use of that also in this one. For export. Just speed that up a bit, so you're not sitting in front of me. Amazing. That's really cool. Very nice. Mm. Yeah, we have some visual changes, of course, on top of the, the rain effect, basically. So you can and the rain the, is like gorgeous. You just see the mines over here are 50% flooded. Um, huh. so, so, yeah, so less efficient in, in the rain season. You have to accompany it. It's also next to it is also... And the really rivers are filling up, too. This, this one? Yeah. yeah. Barely. The, yeah, there. The... Cyanide leeches are le have no productivity. In, in so, so what are these? Because I mean, I know what let's I go know. Back <laughs> <laughs> let's go back to, to this one. So we have salpeter. Ammonia. And then the silver we have. And okay. now the cyanide leeches, which currently can't work because of rain. Because it's raining into them. But why? Um, let's, let's, let's build one. You. Yeah, so the main building. First surprise, it needs to be on the coast. <laughs> And then, even then, first uh, coast building that has modules in it. And yes, Fun fact, are they are building on built on land and not in the water. Um, mm -hmm. they, they all need a street connection, right? They all need a street connection. They're all little uh, tiny factories. Okay, so I keep leave some space here. So what we're doing here is basically we're using chemicals to building wash a hell out of a lot of those. the precious silver from the uh, other materials that come in the ore. And at some point, La Corona all only wants us to wants clean silver and not just the entire ore, because it's of course more efficient to get it. And for this, you're gonna need the input of the silver ore you're producing in the mines, and then the salpeter. 
And this also explains why the rain season is not that great for these cyanide leeches, right? Yeah. Waters down the chemicals. Yeah, he's complaining because the fours, the four here are not built. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And ah! uh, some might have noticed that uh, this hacienda doesn't have the fertilizer module because uh, the fertilizer module is here used to produce the ammonia for then the cyanide data in the in the pond. Oh, ammonia! Um, but it works the same way, right? So you yep. need some. We'll need cattle so in order to make that. Of a through the manure bigger and radius such. because uh, it oh, that's interesting be that's something i missed from before uh, less compact here and tends to more like go around the, with the basin so i gave it a bit of a bigger uh, radius and you also need the dung and uh, salpeter to produce ammonia and the ammonia will then be used to wash out fine silver dust uh. out of the dirty ore and later on you can uh, smelt it into bars and the smelter needs to be uh, highly efficient so uh, we have also uh, in between production for coal so it needs to be produced into cokes and then burned alongside with the silver dust to produce your so you can, can see the buildings yeah. Uh, and yeah the last step after getting caoutchouc is then the mint the, yeah. Mint, yeah, the mint ingress and the caoutchouc is also uh, sourced from the other island so at least at this point you want to have a basin ready on the secondary islands well you will probably need to have because you always obviously also need to as you can see the good point workforce so you constantly need to expand each island more and more basins requiring um, water for its uh, food production if they have that yeah the demands from the or from a much the, greater right dependency the on the main island are getting higher and higher mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so this is uh, if it's the not only managing your thing but also like on top of that like the, the the guy I forgot his name of the of the royal yeah, emissary Mundubara, I guess was it in M in Mundo yeah. Mundubara right yeah yeah, yeah yeah so he's coming and he's he's uh yeah he's uh he's demanding more and more basically silver from the crown yeah. and I think like it's not quite over yet if you if you if you fail it yeah. once right uh, you will make so when he shows up uh, he's gonna uh, ask you for both the silver and then you can make uh, a decision with him so you might have options to do something else for him or uh, if you fail uh, you might promise more for the next time but then, then he will take whatever you have currently uh, or you bribe him with money or you do some other relatively shady things for him and then he <laughs> lets you off the hook. Oh yeah, shady. You can <laughs> do this all the time. At some point you will fail, but you always gonna have one chance at least to get out of a pickle. Yeah. Yeah. And let's just just as I think we're we're yeah we're, we're, we're clear like we're, we're running out of time slowly. <laughs> so again there's gonna be three uh, well I can just show you that here. Three levels of completion. This is just bronze it just Finish them all. Yeah, more for a challenge chances, on the left side for harder victory conditions to play it somehow. a few times. For silver, um, you shouldn't fail once. Yeah, that's a good. That's a go. So make all the deliveries on time, basically. And gold is have a little bit for you, sir. Yeah. So yeah. just in case for like pocket money, basically. Yeah. Yeah. For rainy days. Yeah. And um, to sum it up a bit, the scenario will be um, available on. Um, April 12th, together with um, DLC 10, and um, alongside also a game update that gets released on that day. Um, so here you go, guys. The first DLC is released on April 12th. Which is um, in two weeks. Which is in two weeks already. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, yeah, I guess. Yeah, we didn't. That's a good point. I, we totally forgot we didn't communicate a release date yet. Yeah. <laughs> we got still got we got so much more to cover. Okay, then yeah. I guess I'm gonna close the game for now. And we talk a bit about the other two DLC that are still um, that happening. Are coming. Yep. Yeah. New stuff. Okay, then oh. here come the airships. First one, which yeah. some people actually found out. Or, um, I I I, I <laughs> tried to appease uh, people billboards. with chips. So DLC ten, look at that. You might have seen it in game already if you were very. If, yeah, yeah. If, if you look very, um, very closely uh, yeah. at uh, the billboards, I guess was it right? Yep, yep. Yeah. So then you might have spotted uh, already the key art for DLC 12, uh, 11. Um, so um, DLC 11 is called Empire of the Skies and will be released uh, this summer. And um, I don't know, Dominic, you wanna like tell us a little more about 
what's the content of the DLC? So yeah, um, also a bit of, uh, it's also uh, South America based a bit. So they find a new type of gas, uh, which is not flammable, unlike uh, the passage gas. So now with this new technology, they can build better and bigger airships. Not flammable. Those airships are then also used. A to little work of fiction, but people instead of obviously we did have airships goods onto a plateau. And yeah, we're gonna give you more fancier airships that can do more stuff. At more I've seen I've seen key art like art concept art looks amazing. Like I love I love <laughs> the look of the airships. Yeah. So the Very cool stuff for the airships how they look. Hopefully, hopefully reflect uh, uh, the modernism of this of this new DLC and uh, of these new uh, airships. And on top of it, the old airships can of course also be used. If you have passage, you can also integrate your passage. Uh, infrastructure into this. Let's go for the last uh, DNC level, my bad. Um, last one, uh, which looks very homely and very, very, very nice. beautiful. And it's still in a new world. Yeah. I want that on true. my wall. So that is the beautiful name of the art. Last, um, DLC, DLC 12, is a New World Rising. Um, so it comes late 2022. Um, <laughs> so there is still a lot of time. And um, yeah, we are we are developing a lot of things, um, but I I think that the main part of the scenario uh, of the of the DLC that will really be loved by everybody is that we will introduce uh, new islands to the new world, so you will have enough space to build. Finally, on. bigger space. More space to expand on. Yeah, the, the the new world is going to get bigger with new islands, and this is going to be the second phase of the more building space in the new world, basically. Like yeah. It starts with the Hacienda and then, yeah. So First a way to save space and, and a way to expand. Airship production on the footprint you reduce with the Hacienda. And then we give you uh, the big update for, as you can see, new houses that might house something mm. something special in them. Yeah. Could Museums, it be a perhaps? population here in the new world? You think? So, sounds Anno-like, yes. Mm. That's interesting. So what? Yeah, like you said, it's still looks like a pub down there. The, it's cafes, late, perhaps. Maybe uh, they'll want coffee this year. The release. So, um, yeah, the more information to come, like at a, the second half of the year at some point. So that's still a bit further away. That's why also did, but not, we don't want to and can't like really give go that much into detail on the on the DLC yet. Um, yeah, um, I guess we we covered the DLC. There are obviously going to be game updates as we've always done. Um, for each DLC, but like the usual improvements, bug fixes, these kind of things. Um, do we have we have the list of some some examples? I have the list of examples of game updates. So um, throughout the year, you will um, of course get various game updates, and these game updates, um, I will just go very briefly over it because we are still in the developing phase. But uh, basically, you will be able um, to beautify your cities even more because all of the orchard trees are getting added to the tree painter. And um, we will also give you um, a bit um, uh, or a better op opportunity to organize your ships, which is also uh, quite nice um, because now you can group ships together. Well, not now, but throughout the year. There's going to be uh, the all usual Twitch drop uh, period. There will be an early access period for selected streamers. And there's lots of stuff yeah, well, happening, and you can have early one access one period, selected tonight, stream. What the hell? What about me? Four content. What the hell? On Thursday, which is giving like the the rest of the news, we just like quickly skipped over with like more detail. Okay, and I got an email to send. Next week we have also packed week uh, because we have both dev blogs going into detail about the both uh, about the the DLC itself and the scenario and the release notes, as you're usually asking for with like the full patch notes of what's happening. This is all next week uh, so it's <laughs> lots of stuff happening till release and after release um yeah i guess we are we're actually done with our uh, content with our for the day right yeah no almost on time oh per almost perfectly on time. almost perfectly on time trailer and, and yeah. yeah so we as promised we still got the season four trailer for you so we gonna run that after we say goodbye so let, let's say goodbye so you're not sitting there impatiently and waiting for the trailer right yeah right um so Thank you all for uh, for tuning in. I couldn't see the chat, but I'm pretty sure you were all super happy. I'm just going to assume that you were all super happy. Uh, oh, important point. We have a, a Q&A roundtable on the Anniverse Discord on Friday. Um, 
also be going to be part of like details going to be in the blog on Thursday. So if you have still have questions open, you can actually join us. There's an English and a German session, and ask your questions there. Um, so we're going to be there again and, and yeah, answer more more questions as much as we can at least in that in that time frame. Yeah. Uh, any anything from you? Any last words? Yeah, I mean, thanks for all the passion that you have for the br brand and the game. And um, I hope that you are as hyped as we are for season four and everything that comes in 2022. Okay. Okay, that's it. Yep, then thank you very much. Uh, thanks have everybody. a all amazing evening and enjoy the season four trailer. Bye bye. 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 Season four trailer, here we go. Hey, Anna community. Today, we are very excited to share our plans for Season 4 with you, introducing its three exciting DLCs and giving you an overview of some of the free updates coming in 2022. Season 4 kicks off on April 12th with our first DLC, Seeds of Change which allows you to revolutionize the agriculture sector of the new world. To make this possible, you first have to build the new powerful hacienda, which will become the agricultural hub of your empire. Fulfill your dream of having your own country estate, embellish it and take advantage of its various modules. For example, you can now produce input goods in the new world, which helps your population become more independent. Benefit from the adoption of island-wide policies and produce high-quality fertilizer that will boost farms in both the new world and the old world. This summer, our second DLC, Empire of the Skies, will usher in the age of airships. Using the latest construction materials from the new world, you can build a variety of specialized airships. Optimize your logistical network by transferring goods and workers between your islands and keep your people connected with the new mail system. Your tactical planning will also take on a whole new dimension as you and your competitors vie for aerial mastery. Season 4 will come to its grand finale towards the end of the year with the third DLC, New World Rising. You will not only experience the industrial and economic boom of the New World firsthand, but let your residents embrace their cultural roots and welcome a new population tier. Discover a highly demanded feature introduced with the New World Rising. Newly spotted islands offer a crucial building space to further expand your empire. You get to enjoy the sight of colorful, thriving cities and build an iconic monument as the ultimate landmark for a self-confident identity of your new world residents. As always, each DLC will be accompanied by free game updates. Throughout the year, you will, for example, be able to further beautify your empire with orchard trees getting added to the tree painter, or to improve the organization of your ships by combining groupings. And traders will give you a friendly reminder which items you already own to prevent accidental duplicate purchases. Last year, we introduced a whole new era of challenging gameplay, scenarios. The Season 4 DLCs will add more scenarios that will present you with new challenges and adventures and let you experience Anno 1800 from a different perspective. Buyers of the Season 4 Pass will also receive three exclusive new thematically fitted ornaments, which will be available with the first DLC on April 12th. This was all just a small preview of the content that awaits you in 2022. Thank you for your constant support and constructive feedback, some of which has directly influenced our plans for Season 4. Stay tuned and keep an eye on the Anno Union and our social media channels to make sure you won't miss anything. Happy city building! Good stuff. I'm excited. And I'll be playing most of this sometime later this year. Thanks again for watching, guys. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks for dropping by.